Okay, man, oh man. Hi, Blue. Hi, Bub Bub. You better go back up to the house, sweetheart, are ya? I know you are, sweetie. Yeah, nothing better than a cool day, warm fire, and my sweet Blue companion. Right, buddy? Up here drinking cowboy coffee. Of course, you can't have any. No one's done as gross. Well, he should have started as gross. He turned out to be quite the big dog. Right, Blue? Oh my goodness, you are such a pretty boy. You are, Pop. He likes to sit up here on my shoulder. But boy, is it awkward. As big as he is. Right, Pop Pop? You're almost too big of a dog to be sitting on my shoulder anymore, bud. Yeah? He's checking out the cab and make sure I didn't drop anything. He does that. He's sure a good companion, though. He's he's a knucklehead. He likes to go roam and run, and you never know what he's going to find. Kind of scary sometimes. The things he brings us or, or finds out in the woods and don't bring us. Usually if he's up there too long and too quiet, i got to go find him and find out what he, what's he doing. One day Jacob and I were up there and he found some owl poop. Long green. Wasn't very pretty. It looked like a lot of leaves and whatever. But uh, Blue was trying to eat it and his mouth was eating yum 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 and he was just acting all goofy and cockeyed and, and I go, what in the heck is he eating? Jacob goes, I don't know. I said, well, whatever he's eating, we got to stop that. And we did, we got him away from him and he was okay, but now we kind of got to watch because we know where the owls roost in the tree. And uh, if he gets up around that area, we know what he's looking for. So, stories of a man and his dog. I don't think they ever end, actually. I hope not. Oh, the leaves of fall. Look at the beautiful red colors, guys. I was out in the woods walking this morning. These were laying all over the place, and I thought, wow, what beautiful colors. First of September, and look at that, would you? It's getting hot all summer long, and the leaves are falling. And uh, I thought, what, what the heck, i got to share it with you. Love stuff like this, by the way. Let me get you in focus. I'm going to come back. And yes. I don't think I can get all four of them in there. But anyway, there they are. Yeah, them are what we call the leaves of fall. Gorgeous. Out in the woods.
sometimes it's nice just to take your ground coffee and regrind it. Makes it a little finer, a little more even. I think the finer it is, the more flavor you get. That's the beauty of grinding your coffee, if it's already ground. It's a little on the plus side for you. If you like your coffee rich, that's rich. All right, guys, cowboy coffee. Gotta have it. Boy, is it good. Like I say, when you put the water in the coffee pot, it tends to cool things right down to drinking temperature. Love that part. All right, good luck with yours, fella. Well, good morning from Oregon, and welcome to Cabin Time, Oregon again. Well, today we have a day that's going to be in the highs of 60 maybe so this morning started out a little chilly 50 degrees maybe 51 or 52 but it was cool enough that i thought i'd better start a fire in the cabin get the heat rolling in here you know falls here i think uh let's see yesterday or maybe it was the day before it was the first day of fall yesterday was the first official day so anyway it's here and it's cooling down. We're supposed to be uh, in the 60s all week. It's going to be a very cool uh, week. And uh, I guess it's time to fire up the old wood tool and see if she still works. And right now I got her going. Looking pretty good. Uh, yeah, yesterday I, I went down to Roseburg. Drove down there to do some uh, swap meat picking for my grandson Jacob. Struck out. Looking for parts for his old truck. I don't know why, but it seems like every time we go to a swap meet, stuff I'm looking for, they don't have. They have parts for his truck, just the wrong stuff. So we're going to keep looking. We're not giving up. But in the meantime, on the way home, we uh, managed to hit a few junk shops. You know me. One of the junk shop kings there. Um, this one outfit I walked into an estate sale I was quite shocked but everything in there was three dollars I said well this has got to be a definite win three dollars an item what can we find my wife says well no telling I said I'm sure I'll find something so I'm walking around in there and this guy had this big huge tarp I asked the guy is this a tin or a tarp he goes I don't know I said three bucks he goes yep I said well whatever it is I'll take her I still don't know. It's in my pickup. Then it was a smaller tarp, and I knew it was a tarp because it was all rolled up nice and neat. And I don't know, it might be a 10 by 12 or something like that. Three bucks. Grab that. I thought that's pretty cheap tarps. Uh, then I'm kind of walking along this shelf, and I notice that there's a, a piece for a tractor. It's a, an adjuster bar, I guess is what you'd call it. On the three-point hitch, it's the upper adjustment bar that uh, has high mins on both ends, and it's got a screw deal in the middle. So it'll shorten or widen that bar. Three bucks. Old wife says, good lord, you buy one of those new, somewhere there, 25 to 50 bucks, depending on where you get it. So three dollars, that was a steal, and it was like brand new. It is missing one little center. There's a hole in the middle, and it takes a bar about yay long. All I got to do is just put a couple of little uh, 
welds on the end so the bar don't fall back out. But the reason for that is when you pull the bar all the way to one side or the other, when you're cranking on that to tighten or loosen, it just makes it easier to, to use. I can fix that. I've got metal laying around here, so that's an easy fix. Um, what else did I buy down there? Gosh, I know I picked up a couple more goofball pieces, but here again, the prices were just unrealistic. And I walked out of there feeling pretty good. That was a win for me that day, and I uh, noticed there's another building next door. It says Antique Mall. So I told wife, I said, well, we got to go hit that. I mean, no telling what's in there. Figured it's all high-priced stuff, and it's just going to be, you know, whatever. So we walked in there, and sure enough, it was full of little booths like these antique malls are and we're wandering around the place wandering around the place they got cast iron really good prices on cast iron good quality stuff and their prices weren't horrific like a lot of places are so we're wandering around the place and lo and behold i come uh to this one wall the wall has a rack of blankets first thing caught my eye is there was a red blanket up there with a black stripe on both ends and i'm thinking Wait a minute, that's like an old Hudson Bay blanket. I said, I gotta check that out. So I'm pulling the blanket back and forth and I'm looking at this thing trying to figure out is it got any holes in it, tears in it, how good or bad is it. It wasn't a Hudson Bay, but it's a copycat blanket. It is a 100% wool blanket. They had $100 on that thing. I thought, you know, you stop and think about 100 bucks. where can you buy something like that these days for that kind of money? Getting pretty rare, pretty hard to do. So, yep, I bought her. I told the wife, I said, I gotta have that blanket. And she goes, I know you do. She knew it. I got the best wife in the world. Good Lord. So, that being said, we walked out with the blanket. Um, I don't think we bought another blessed thing there, but man, that blanket was a sweet deal. Just had to have that. So anyway, it's gonna be living up here at the cabin. And uh, I still got problems with my white blanket, my other fake Hudson Bay blanket. Um, that cat smell, man oh man, I sprayed that thing with um, Simple Green, both sides. I've had it hanging up here in the cabin for two weeks, still stinks. So I think I'm going to have to take it to the house, get some hot water, do some dipping and poking and jabbing and hand wash the best I can. I may have to do it two or three times to try and get that stink out of that blanket, but I guess that's coming up. But I'm not going to show you guys, because I don't want to put that on camera when it stinks so bad. I don't want you guys smelling that blanket. So, with that being said, this is not going to be much of a video, because I've been gone all weekend, been running all weekend. Um, I haven't had a chance really to do anything up here at the cabin. And yet today I still have more chores to do, so I thought I'd better get up here, hang out up here with Blue for a while, build a fire. We're just hanging, watching it rain a little bit, what little it's raining. We're enjoying the day or the moment, and uh, I gotta get back to work. But not on the cabin. So, stick with me, folks. I'm sorry I didn't get to show you another working video at the cabin. But you know, every day can't be a working day at the cabin. In my life, I got other priorities, and sometimes those other priorities ruin my day, if you know what I mean. So with that being said, watch the video. I hope you enjoy it. And uh, I'll see you on the next one. Like always, adios. Hey, live your life carefully. Remember, don't do as I say, do as I do. Wait, don't do as I do, do as I say. I don't do as I say. That would be, it's confusing. So just be careful, would you? I care about each and every one of you. Thank you all for subscribing, being on my channel. I hope I can keep it lively enough that we can keep some of you guys, uh, not lose all of you over time, which I'm afraid is going to happen. But I'm just an old guy out in Oregon building a cabin all by myself. Not an easy task. But uh, me and Blue, we do the best we can. He's over there sleeping right now. He's working, that dog. He's a working dog. So, all right, guys. See ya.